buy things at here. Websites. .com. <laughs> And welcome to, I guess I'm in my mouth for a minute. Welcome to, uh, I guess, the first session of many, many lucrative sessions where we draw cartoons for money. So I'm going to try to make some money. And I'll apologize up front because I just bit a big chunk out of my cheek, the inside of my cheek. It's killing me. So I'm folding up some paper towel here to uh, go between that giant bleeding sore and whatever tooth decided to jab into me. I'm pretty sure there. <clears throat> if you can hear me, all right. I'm pretty sure that tooth has joined Antifa and has gone rogue and needs to be taken care of. I don't know what happened, but that hurt a lot and it bled a lot. I don't think I've ever bled so much from inside of my mouth. Anyhow, so we're live now and this is one time I went live and I judged windbreakers for money. That wasn't very lucrative. And then one time we went live and judged your guns for money. That also wasn't very lucrative. So this time we're going to go live and cartoon guns for money and Hopefully that's gonna be very lucrative. So we're uh, gonna screen share here, boom, and click, and boom, right? And like this, there we go. So we got the uh, text chat over here. We're using El Pato, which is the duck. And it's got this monocle, and it sits up here in the top, judging everything that happens. So we're going to be checking on the comments. First while is out there. Good evening. This would be a good day to go uh, try to make something on the machine out there. In the process of cleaning it, well, I guess I can finish that sentence, except that it's like 111 or something. Let me go look. It's super hot right now. Oh, right now. It's coming down from 108 a little while ago. And looks like we're going into a week where it's gonna be pretty hot tomorrow, pretty hot the next day. It'll go down to 105 and give us a respite for a couple of days at 105. Then we'll go back up to 107 and then 108. So yeah, it's not so bad when it goes into the 70s, but once it gets up here and it doesn't go under the 80s, that's when it starts to really get low. Anyhow, <clears throat> otherwise it'd be a good day to be outside working on this stuff because I felt like it today a little bit. Uh, in the process of removing all the basically stuff laying on there, uh, I did find some projects that were like, let's call them 80% of the way done. Um, let's make this clear. They're not 80 percenters, they have nothing to do with anything. This was just some wood that I had been working on and I had practiced cutting. Uh, I'm pretty sure I cut it with the new surface, but I think the gun rights policy conference and all that came up and it pretty much went gun rights policy conference and then Vegas or not Vegas, uh, gun rights policy conference. And then, uh, Washington DC going to the, uh, Two A rally, then Christmas, and then uh, Shot Show, and then you know coronavirus, and whatnot. So anyway, we're going to uh, attempt to make a couple bucks today. 
drawing cartoons of guns. So if anybody's got a gun they want to have a cartoon made of, let me know, and then we'll uh, go find it, and we'll make a cartoon of it, and then you pay me a bunch of money. You have a big fun time for everybody. Uh, we'll see how this works. I'm pretty sure I'm corking people because I'm just going rogue. I'm just going live in the middle of a Sunday. I don't even know who's supposed to be live right now. Um, do I want to open a new one? Maybe I just open a new file. New. We'll call it uh, Guns for Money. Good one. And now we got that open. And we'll save this one and close it. Uh, how about we call it 2020? Uh, two. All right, so we're closing the one that I was working on before, and we're now have just now that it's closed, we have just one open, and we're using Adobe Illustrator. Uh, this isn't making it very unconfusing because I have this whole thing going on in the background here. Uh, I don't know if this is helping or not, but it immediately hurt as soon as I took it out of my mouth, so I'm putting it back in my mouth. I basically just had this wad of uh, paper towel separating my gum from my teeth. So, for whatever reason, that really feels good compared to when I took it out, it started to burn. So, um, if nobody, no, oh, I guess I should look. I can't see shit. Uh, if nobody says anything, though, I'll probably just wait to draw cartoons and continue working. This is what I was doing, and I was looking for something to do to not work. But there's no point. So, I'll just grab this and copy. And go back over to Illustrator. And since nobody's around, I'm just going to go open that file I just closed. Open recent. Just did Pat Spurgeon. Who knows who Pat Spurgeon is? I think I did a pretty decent drawing of her. But uh, what was she? The first bold? She's an Olympian. She's either the first female gold for the U.S. No, not for the U.S. For shooting. Um, or is she the first female gold ever? Anyway, we got two female Olympians in there. I lost their images last year or earlier this year. Uh, so now we're bringing over Rob Morse, Slow Facts podcast or something. I lost their images, or at least the file that I made their images in, and I'm too cheap to go back and redraw them if I can help it. So instead, I'm going into this file that barely references them. It's like a file that references files that don't exist. And I'll jump back over. I copied it. It's making it very difficult to switch. So Alt-Tab is a way to switch things. Uh, so I'm going to go back over to this layer. And we'll call it Rob Morse. And then uh, there's no zoom in. Zoom in. Right. And oh, that was the problem. This is not a good image. So we're going to click on it and we're going to make it bigger. Uh, bigger. Bigger. Let's see what happens. So now if we highlight it and try to image trace with six colors, no. Trace with quality, no. Alright. Oh, you have to draw this guy. Dang it. Alright. Well, what I'm not gonna be able to do. I was going up. So here's the next one. Margaret Thompson Murdoch. Over here. 
Let me lock his thing down and go here, write her name. Go grab that picture. Oh yeah, what if I get this? What if I did this? Let me touch his face here first and see if it works. <clears throat> so in design, in, in design, we got to lock this thing so that the transform handle is attached to the file. Oh shit, look at that. That did get pretty decent. So I'm going to go like this and then copy it and see what happens. Copy, alt tab over to here. Go back to his layer like that. and now paste. That's much larger. Zoom in. No, it doesn't look like it got a here. Yeah, so there was nobody here. So I just decided it work instead of playing. So uh, I'll just real quick finish this real quick, if you don't mind. Click. And then try giving it six colors. Oh, no, I'm not going to see how to with that. Spend too much time on it. I'll go lo fi. I'll take that. Expand. I drag it over here just so I can oops. here. Ungroup, which is for some reason I can't ungroup anymore. What's up with that? Can't ungroup anymore. Object ungroup, fine. Delete that value somewhere. Go down here, find this layer, delete it, this layer. Delete it. Come on. Delete it. And grab the rest of this. Group it. Even though it's going to be a jerk about it. Group and expand, which I don't really understand what that is, but I have to do it. Um, and then now I can take this and export it as, because that's what I really need, is just a much bigger version of Rob Morris's head. Everyone has that same problem. If I had a dollar for everybody who needed a really big version of Rob Morris's head. Um, then we go in here. Uh, we go in here. We go Rob Morris. And then I can go export. And now uh -oh. we got his head, but something else happened here. Something else happened. One of these other things. What the hell is this? So now we'll try exporting that again. Uh, it's going to be the one with a weird looking head. Yep, right there, because it's weird, because it pulled all kinds of other stuff in there. Do I want to replace that? Yes. And now it's centered, it looks normal. Something over here isn't caught in it. So now we got his head. Now I can save that. And I'll just leave it open. But we'll flip over to the guns. So do you got a gun? You got a gun? Give me some money. Give me a gun. I want to make a cartoon of it. Uh, let's see what we're talking about here. Let's see. Why don't we grab this? Come over here. I'm using the Duck Duck Go now. I'm all about the patos. Only solo patos. Is that how you'd say this? Solo me picato. No, I don't know what that means. Solo me pato. El browser. I think. Um. Go to here and then the Instagram. Instagram is a social media platform that's mostly, I'm gonna check my message real quick here. Uh, it's a social media platform. Uh, yep. Um, it's a social media platform focused on images. So very uh, image centric and until recently, not even uh, multiple images, not even video. It was really just images. So I'm a big fan of it. I really like taking pictures of guns. I like looking at other people's pictures of guns. But it's also got some other stuff going on, different levels, different layers of stuff. So uh, uh, I pulled this thing out of my mouth and it's killing me. Oh, all right. I bit my mouth. 
bit my own mouth earlier today, right before this thing. And I've never had my, I've never bitten such a big chunk out of my own mouth. So I've got a piece of paper towel crammed in there between my teeth and the side of my mouth that I bit off. Literally bit so much off the inside of my mouth. I don't know if I should cut the piece off because I don't think it'll heal back on. But if it does heal back on, it'll protrude into my mouth like Florida. And I don't really want that. I don't want like an extra tonsil coming in from the side with a bunch of scar tissue on it. See, this is where if we were sharks, we'd have them little tiny sharks that just swim in there and take care of this kind of stuff. We need some sort of a small thing that goes in there and takes care of this for us. I don't know if a fish would work. We'd have to go in the swimming pool or something. Maybe you could go into like a thing like what Luke Skywalker's got, that path. Robots could stick their, mouth, their little robot arms in there and fix it. Uh, Whose who's, uh, picture should we grab? Probably auto loader. So we'll pick an auto loader. You can pick out of here if you want. This is Moon Food from back in the Gun Channel's days before he started hating guns. And he takes pictures of guns for the money. And if you want, you can pick one of his guns. Or there's this other dude because we only pick dudes. John Wiseman's World. Can't pick that one, of course. But uh, he's got some pictures of guns if somebody wants to pick one of his. Now, is there a girl that takes by well, there's a girl that takes pictures of guns? I know a girl who takes pictures of guns. Hold on. Uh, I gotta remember what her name is though. Shit, I can't remember the name of her. Jazz, maybe? Yeah. Uh, no, I don't remember the name of her. It'll probably just die off and fall off on its own. Don't cut your mouth open. Yeah, but it's it's like a uh, about the size of a piece of it's bigger than corn. It's like the size of a jelly bean, and it's and I really wailed on it with my like sharp ass. Well, one of my molars joined Antifa, so it grabbed a knife or something and went and wild at my side of my mouth. So it's hanging on there by like two little pieces. I don't know. I really need some sort of a mirror and like maybe a small robot or some sort of a maybe some sort of a like a, whatever they use when they work on stuff underneath of an electron microscope, something like that. Something you can jam in your mouth that's not real big, but that has little arms and a view screen or something. Then I could make a determination. But by fiddling with it with my tongue, it feels like I should probably take a razor blade to it or something or a stacto blade. Slice it off of there. It's going to hurt, but it already hurts. And then that would create a cavity, like a big hole for all those teeth that gone rogue back there to like hang out in. Plus, I'll look slimmer, right? It'll make my one cheek look a lot slimmer, and that's fashionable. I'll take all my pictures from that side, and people will be like, dang, how does it keep such svelte, smeat paste going? It's one of my goals in life is to have a slender face. I don't care if I got to slice pieces of the middle out of my, or out of the inside of my mouth for it. I could put a video up on how to bite a big chunk out of the inside of your mouth. Demonetize YouTube over free speech. Sure, you know that's supposed to be. Capitalize inconsistently for profit, I guess. Jas, J A S, that's what it was. So there's a girl that takes pictures of guns. We've done a patch for Jas one time. Is that how you say it? I think you say Jas. Jace, maybe? Insta dimples, so oh, that's an idea. Get like the sunken dimple thing. I already had dimples going though from a uh, gunshot incident. Yeah, 
it'd be cool to make a bunch of oh damn is a lego person the right scale for a matchbox car i didn't know that it'd be cool to make a lego person for all of the second amendment advocates probably just need a little tiny printer for that because i think they just print the faces on lego people So, oh, there's SS Pond. You need, if you ever find yourself in Nebraska, you need to uh, get something from a gun shop slash pawn shop. Check out SS Pond. I haven't been there, but I've heard good things. It'd be cool if they let us, if El Pato here would let us put like, you know, click a switch and then it would be a link, right? So people could put their mouse up here and click on the banner. Like, it's up like this. Oops. It's up like this. Make it so it's a banner. You could click on it. I think this is a spammer. I don't think that's a real person. I never seen him before. Usually mouth sores go away, right? But not when you bite like most of the inside of your mouth out. At first I was just, I think I was eating. I was eating, I was eating a tomato. So, you know, I bit half of my mouth out and I didn't even realize it because I was eating this tomato. And then I'm like, what the hell's in my mouth? And I stuck my finger in there and it came out all bloody. I'm like, what? I've never had that happen before. It's kind of weird. So it was just gushing blood for a while. But you know, mouths stop pretty quick. You just pinch it, it stops. But usually that's all there is. But man, it's not, it's just throbbing. What do you think? Ibuprofen for that kind of shit? Or Tylenol for that kind of shit? Yeah. I think ibuprofen for pain, right? Tylenol for headaches. Although I'll probably get a headache, right? Having a bunch of pain right in my mouth. All right, she's got mostly pictures of competition shooting, so we're going to go back to, why don't we go to SS Ponds? Picture over there. Uh, is it an SS Pond or is it an S and S Pond? On the, on the Instagrams. Oops, that's too big. Yes. No, that's Texas. When I get it to give me that. Are you not on the Instagram? For a minute, I thought I seen you on the Instagram. Those are interesting. Almost look like they got nothing to do with the porn shop. Well, if I had this little guy, he could probably go in there and decide whether or not to gnaw off the rest of that inside of my cheek or not. He could hoard it like one of these little eggs he's got. Have you heard from this for inflation, Tylenol is for pain? Oh, really? Like uh, when you walk and your knees get hurt, like that kind of inflation and uh, inflammation. Oh, okay. You know, kind of thing. I'm just looking for a, uh, I was looking for a gun to draw because that's sort of the point. I was trying to draw some guns for money over here, make some cartoons for money, but uh, nobody's really throwing any at me. So I am going to go back to trying to get some work done. So I'm writing a book 
or I'm putting together a book, it's not like I'm writing anything, uh, called The uh, 50 States of 2A, where I'm going to do similar info that was in the Almanac, but in a uh, regional layout, state by state layout. Uh, so not so much focused on when, but where. So I got about, well, I was done with it. I wasn't done. With it. I was, I had gotten a bunch of it accomplished and two things happened. One, I figured out that I did the whole thing in the wrong format. I did it in like a piece of paper folded in. I did it in a piece, a piece of paper folded in half, in half, instead of a piece of paper folded in half. So anyway, that made the layout totally small and stupid and in the wrong shape. So I've been having to first go back and put it all in normal format. But then at the same time, in the middle of all that, literally in the middle of all that is when I lost the hard drive from last year, the beginning of this year. So all these little images that have this little question mark need to be redrawn. So I'm trying to save that time by going in and doing all this trickery to spend three quarters of the work being lazy. I don't have to do the whole amount of work. And since I got to do this anyway, I'm doing this instead of the guns because nobody's been throwing guns at me. But if anybody wants to uh, see a gun get drawn into a cartoon and you want to throw money at me, then I'll start doing that instead of this, you know, heartbeat. Uh, well, Browning high power, but I'm saying throw a picture at me. Picture. Because uh, I'm not going to draw it out of my mind. I'm not that good. I can draw it out of. Uh, I can trace on it basically. So, what were we looking at? We were looking at, oh, that's, that's wrong with my mouse. We can look at this. I don't know what all I got open over there. So, we were looking over here at a couple of different channels. One was John Wiseman's. He mostly focuses on the revolvers, but occasionally takes a picture of something else. And we will never do a picture on the flag. So, let's ignore that one. So if you want to pick one off of there, or auto loader or moon food, depending on what you want to call them. Uh, before you click on channels and start hating guns, this dude used to take pictures of guns professionally for a living. And he's got a pretty good ones. So I've done a couple of his already. Obviously he's got a Beretta fetish. So he does take occasionally from like contractual obligations, pictures of other guns. But a lot of bread is in there. Anyway, that's something we can get started with, or we'll go back to work. And like I say, I ate a big chunk out of the inside of my lip right now, or my jaw, or what is this, my cheek. So uh, I'm going to change out my paper towels because it's getting pretty cool. It's like I got a big piece of blood gum in my mouth. Oh, you know what would be good? Like a lidocaine or some cocaine or one of them things that the dentists have. Stick a swab of that on there. Oh, man, that would be the thing right now. The doctors have that stuff where if they're going to drill into your jaw or whatever, they just wipe it with a Q-tip once. That's what I need right there. Oh, do they make that shit for babies? If I could go to the store, I would just go buy that shit. A lot of that stuff for babies. I bet you that would work. It feels good as soon as I put the fresh piece of the paper towel in there because it sticks to it and keeps it away from my teeth. Pretty soon I'm going to have to do something about this one tooth. It's giant antifa and it's gone rogue. I was trying to rip my mouth out from the inside. Horrible. Like all the other teeth are going one way, and it decided, nah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work my way out into that cheek over there. Probably some disease. All right, nobody saying anything, so going back to working. So I just did Rob Moore's, now I'm gonna do Margaret Thompson Murdoch. Murdoch. But I just figured out that if I come over here, so what I got over here is a, I don't know what this is, some sort of a temporary reflection or temporary echo, I guess, of what the image was. 
but it doesn't reference any of it. So it's just some like temp file inside of the Adobe file. Maybe it's in the cloud, I don't know, but whatever it is, it's just a small version of it. So I stretched it big. I did a screen capture, I print screened it. No, I didn't, I uh, copied it, copy, control C. It's small again, because it really doesn't need to be that big. And then jump over to Illustrator. Go back over to where I've got these things. I'm gonna close the layer that was Rob Morris that we just did. I'm gonna go to this layer I just created with her name on it. And when I paste it, it's just a, basically a JPEG. It's a raster image, uh, an image composed of a bunch of dots. So it's like a giant, little tiny or a giant watercolor image of uh, the temporary file over in that other Adobe product. So now I'm going to tell it, look at this like if it's an image. I think that's what I'm doing. here. And then I'm telling it, now turn it into a vector image. And I want you to do, like if I just said, turn it into a vector image, it's going to say, well, I can do that. And it's going to look black and white and stupid. So I'll undo that. I'll say turn into a vector image, but I mean I want you to be a vector file, but like I want you to have, you know, some amount of detail, but not insane amount of detail. I want you to be made up of puzzle pieces, but I want it to be a baby puzzle and not a giant puzzle for adults or something. So maybe I'll try six colors. There can't be more than six colors in this image. And that came out pretty good. It did turn her eyes the same color as her shirt for some reason. So I'm going to undo that and see what happens if we image trace it at 16 colors. We don't need 16, but six didn't work. That really doesn't look too bad. And if you notice, I'm going to go back and forth a few times. If I undo it, look at how pixelated the, the lines are because it's a little tiny raster image blown up and every time you blow up a raster image you you blow it out into its pixels that's what you're going to see is some kind of crazy steps everywhere so when we turn it into a vector image and at this this quality or this compression i don't know what the word is this this level boom it turns these into smooth lines and it keeps all the colors we want so there's like this piece this piece this piece there, there's pieces here but they're big pieces and everything's nice and smooth. So considering what I, how long it would take me, it would take me like 10 minutes to draw this again. This was faster. So now I'm gonna say, I'm happy with this, continue, expand it all the way. And now it's a different type of file, but effectively looks a little bit the same, but does what I want it to do. It looks better and it's scalable. It's a, it's a type of file that I can print, I can send to a printer. Uh, and they can actually use it. If I sent the old file that it came from to a printer, it would look all weird with those boxes. It would try, it would attempt to draw little tiny squares and it would look really bad. So it's got this white line around it and I don't want that. So I'm gonna highlight it and say ungroup because it's a, basically a puzzle with a bunch of pieces right now. I just basically effectively told it, don't stay together, be individual puzzle pieces. And now I'm coming over here and clicking on just the white part. It's still grouping, so I'm gonna ungroup. Ungroup. Very fine, so it's being weird. I'm gonna click on that white and then delete it. And then try to find that white maybe, and then delete it. Okay, so now I've gotten into that background because I just want it to be free floating or I want her head to be free floating. So now I'm gonna go back to object and to keep it all together, group it so I don't have to worry about just grabbing the brown of her hair or one line out of her eye or something. She's gonna move around as a complete unit. And I don't know why, but, or I do know why, but I'm gonna click expand again. And that does something that I can't explain, but it makes it so that when I shrink it, everything stays in proportion. If you don't expand it and I would make it big, all these lines would get smaller proportionally. And if I shrunk it, it would get really dark and all the lines would seem like they got bigger. So I don't know what exactly is happening there, but it just completes the, the vectorization or something. So anyway, we're gonna get this at some point, right? At some size, this is basically a piece of a 
It's an 11 by 17 piece of paper behind it. So this is a fairly large version of her head. We can now just uh, save the file so that now we've got what we're doing here saved and it's not just scratch. But then we can also file and export basically just her head out of here, not the whole file. And her name was Margaret, whatever, whatever. I got to go find her name again. Uh, over here. So copy her name, go back to whatever I was doing in Adobe there. I was saving it and I'm saving it in this folder and I'm giving everybody the preface to a activist. So just click on anybody's name and you get the preface. I changed the back part to her name. I went over and copied it so I can just paste her name in there. And in my export, it'll show just her face with a clear background and then okay. So even though it's on that white piece of paper, the highlighted part is all that's actually being saved right now. And that's on its own layer. So I'll lock the layer and remove it. And it, it's you know there with this guy is on another layer and she's on an, another layer altogether. And uh, eventually there'll be you know, 12 or 20 in this file and I'll close this file out, start a new file, just so that the files don't get too large. But uh, now we'll save this just to save it. We'll go back over to the thing we started from, which is the book and the page about Kansas. And let's see, Margaret Thomas Murdoch, what the hell? I believe she was the first gold medalist, the first female gold medalist. And I think Pat Spurgeon was the first to medal to three times, I forget, but they both did some. So, um, Margaret, though, is from Kansas, so um, because when I lost the files or whatever, I lost the cartoon of her head, we just effectively made a new one. I'm going to go back over to where this little exclamation point thingy is, and it just went and looked on my computer and said, oh, there's a new file for her? Let me go grab it. So that was what we were trying to accomplish. So we're going to be doing the same thing with uh, Kelly, so we'll highlight her. Make her, well, I shouldn't do it this way. Oh, look, I just grabbed the transform handles, and because they're not connected, it didn't do anything. So now that we've basically tied the transform handles to her head here, as I make it bigger, holding down the shift key so that the proportionality stays the same. See, I'm moving my mouse all over the place, but it's always going to be certain height in relationship to a certain uh, width. So it's always going to be the right proportion of her. If I didn't hold down the shift key, I could make her look, well, I guess I can make her look weird, but I could make the, the image unnecessarily small. I guess I just learned something. I don't really need to hold down the shift key. You can just make the thing bigger. Anyway, oops, I shouldn't do that. So I've made her head bigger just so that, again, you can see there's some pixelization and stuff. So that when I copy, I just copy right now. Um, when I copied it, I effectively copied a much bigger picture. Go back over to Adobe. Just to make those other layers go away. They're still there. They're just not shown. Open up a new layer. Paste. Paste onto the layer. I guess I have to first make the layer visible. So paste Kelly's picture in there. I'm too lazy to type her name, so I'm going to go back over here and highlight her name that I already typed in the past one time and then jump back over it. Instead of being called layer three, it'll now be called her name in case anybody else ever has to open up my files, she can find out where her picture is. So if we looked again, if we zoomed in, we would see that these are pixelated because it's a raster file. It's a, it's a big version of a tiny thumbnail that this other file is kind of remembering, but it doesn't have the actual file. It just kind of remembers there was another file. So I'm definitely cheating. I'm going to this software and saying, hey, remember that picture? And they're like, yeah, I do remember that picture vaguely. And we're saying, and then I go, let me, let me remember, tell me about what you remember. And then I go over to this software and I say, here's what they remember. And then I say, come over here and click this little magic button. And with what they remember, 
why don't you give me what I want? And then they go, okay. And then I go, okay. And then we go up here and, uh, and then we go over here. I just like to do this over here so I know I'm getting rid of the white. Otherwise you can't see the white over there. Uh, ungroup, right? Object, ungroup. Oh, my mouth is hurting. And I'm talking, it's like the dumbest thing to do when you're trying to eat your mouth from the inside. Uh, go over here, highlight that white part, delete. Try to find that little tiny white part, delete. And now we got just Kelly's head again. We're going to object and then group all that together so I don't have to worry about grabbing just her eyeball or something. I got her whole head every time I grab it. And then export it. Export it as. So right now it's trying to export as the name of the last file I did. And the last file I did was Margaret, the, the Olympic shooter. So I don't want to have it that. I will instead change it to the text that I just I still should still have in the clipboard. So paste. Yep, can Leanne export? And it gives me a little preview down here. I see that it's just the blank space on her head. So boom. Now I can go back to that first file and it's gone from what to are you sure? And now I can basically as soon as I click on it, it'll go, it'll say, hey, I found a file that's pretty much what you wanted. Do I have to replace it? And then boom, it's replaced. So now we've got this file of Kelly, and if we zoomed in, well, you're seeing a preview of it, but in real life, it's a vector and it will never pixelate when we print it, it'll be nice. But it's the same situation we had before. It, Even though there's a nice vector sitting on the hard drive that is referencing, it actually only is a vague recollection of that file. The same thing we use to secure the, or to save the file or rescue the file is what it's given us. So kind of a catch-22 if you're following me there. Or is that a catch-22? Or is that a snake eating itself? Whatever the hell that is, that's what happened. So let's keep going. I had already done all the firearms inventors, pretty much just down to some, just a few of the, the activists. Because it's just the activists who I had done cartoons of, like in January and March, maybe of this year. So it was only like six or eight. Everybody else was just remapping the files. It was just a few here that I had to, well, either redraw or fake like this one. I'm going to have to fake Tatiana Whitlock. So open up that weird. Um, highlight her. Make it auto fit. In other words, keep the transform handles attached to the fit photo inside of it. Um, just a weird access that I don't know why the Illustrator gives us that. Open it up, copy. Copy this little pixelated memory of a file. Pixelated memory of a thumbnail, I guess is what that is. Um, I just put it back to normal size because it's eventually going to need to be that size again anyway. Come back over here. I can close Kelly's layer because we're done with that one. Put this new file down on this layer. And since I'm never going to remember how to spell Tatiana Whitlock, I'm going to go grab her name over here. And alt tab back over to Illustrator. Change it from layer to her name by pasting it in there. And now do the same process. Um, grab the file, the stretched open JPEG basically, and I will uh, flip it to this. I don't know why it's making me do that. But then I'll go to image trace, and 16 colors seems to be the one that's been working. And it's definitely not the same thing I started with because the thing I use gives me a consistent brush shape and I can tell right away that this creates something that has a different brush shape. But this is actually a really quick stylistic way of taking what I create with my drawing, my stenciling or whatever you want to call my, what do you call that? Tracing, what I do is just tracing. Um, 
I could take that tracing and do this step and it would make it look like I went to some fancy art brush or some sort of comic book or, uh, inker. Okay, anyhow, so I'm gonna drag this over. So I keep doing that. I'm gonna drag this over here and I'm going to ungroup it. I'm gonna grab it over here. I'm going to ungroup it. Back. Go back to here. Wow, what is all this? Why is it being like this? That's what I know. I guess ungroup that object. Wow, why is it doing this? I did expand it. Okay, so I never expanded it, I guess. That's weird. I guess I was talking. So now I'm going to ungroup it. Try to get to this. No. Yeah, it's been really weird. So whatever this procedure I'm doing here is obviously create some layer of reaction that I'm not anticipating, but it's accomplishing what I want for the most part. So we're gonna go in here and delete that white part, delete this white part. Like I say, it gets us what I'm looking for, which is this. We'll group this again. Something else is happening though, like something else is happening on some layer I'm not aware of. I don't think it really matters, but that's why I'm getting some unexpected weirdness here. But uh, now we've got her name already in here, so I should be able to file and export as. And I guess I didn't have her in here. So then we'll get rid of Wayne's name there. Put this in, and when we export it, double check that it's her. Boom. And now we got Tatiana. And that takes us back over here. It went from a little question mark going, huh? To the one that's saying, hey, is this the one? And we go, yep. And that's all there's to it. And we'll continue through. Uh oh, which was I going? This way? I guess I was going down. Uh, Brian. So anyway, Brian Patrick. I forgot what this guy did. This guy did something. What did this guy do? Mm. All right, well, so I'm going to go back over to Adobe, I should say Illustrator. Paste that guy's name in here, and then go back over here and make this bigger. Make it auto fit, then make it bigger. You could just say undo. That's probably the faster way to be accurate. And then go back to Illustrator. And go back to this guy's thing, make it visible, go pass that down, go like this, even bigger. Flip it back to image. What is this? It keeps going to path for some reason. I have no idea why. 16's been working. Mm. Yes, it worked. And then expand. And then ungroup. And then yeah. So open that up. Even though it's ungrouped, it's still in a giant group. Use this. I don't know what those lines were, but they were in there. So what's going on here? Why can't I see lower than this? And delete that, I guess. Yes. And delete that, I guess. Back to have this whole head over here. <laughs> now let me group it. That's weird. So I'll expand it. And I'm guessing it is grouped somehow. Uh, I can try to fight it. I'll just keep going. And we got the guy's name or not. Sure. 
Export it. Export it as. Get rid of that. Paste his name in there. Boom. Now we got that guy. Now we lock it. Now we put that on there since we all used up all those layers. Just add a whole bunch more layers. All right. Save this file just so that we got it in case. And flip that little exclamation point so it's happy. The two dudes from Minnesota. I don't know why I'm gonna make some English thing here. Oh, I should still do machine gun beating. That'd be good. I didn't think about that. It's not right now. So it looks like the two dudes from oh no. Benjamin Henry, we already got him though, under inventors. And same thing with Christian Sharps. Font Remington. Mm, so that's Peggy Turturro. I need to uh, do her, the two dudes from Minnesota. A bunch of the inventors done already. Just need to reassociate them like Gatling here. So these guys the other day. Carbine Williams. Invented the 30 cal intermediate size rifle, short rifle, while he was in jail. Killing a sheriff for getting out and building guns for the military. There's some interesting stories. So I got a re re layout, I guess, all of the things that were kind of. Hmm. At the time, I thought they were maybe 80% finished. Turns out, I'm learning that there's a lot of little details, but you know, the major pieces were basically figured out. And then, no, well, you, uh, you did them in the wrong format. Do them all over again. Or basically do this to every single page. And that's a lot of work. But it looks like there might be maybe three more so far. I think that's what we're at. And this is Derringer. So I guess I 
I've got a couple more. All right, well, with that, we've been on for an hour. The whole idea here was to try to save this farm and we got no super chats, we got no contributions to any way, shape or form. So I guess that was not successful as far as uh, going live to draw guns. So I'm glad I did end up doing some other stuff for another project because uh, this is not something people are interested in. I do want to thank the people that showed up for spending some time over here. I'm sure I'm porking somebody. So uh, check out the other things that go live out there. And uh, thanks for being part of those conversations. We will be back to pick you up later.